In the prior videos, we talked about a technique known as TMR, that is triple modular redundancy. TMR has gained widespread use for the protection of logic, registers, clock routing, IP, memories, and IOs. In this video, we'll describe the different types of TMR available, how they work, and what types of TMR to use when. What exactly is TMR? TMR stands for Triple Modular Redundancy. You can use TMR to correct SEU single bit errors in any part of the design that you designate, logic, memories, blocks, IP, etc. All types of TMR triplicate the designated portion of the original design and then determine the final error corrected output by applying a majority vote directly to the outputs of all of the triplicates. The idea is that if an SEU occurs in any one of the triplicates, the output from the TMR circuit will be correct, thus mitigating the SEU. Simplify offers a variety of different TMR implementations to protect different primitives and macros in the FPGA design. First, it offers so-called local TMR to protect any register. The register is protected by triplicating it and then feeding the outputs from the triplicates into a majority voter to determine the final error corrected output. Secondly, there is distributed TMR or DTMR. This is used to protect the internals of entire logic blocks. A register resides at the output of each triplicated logic block and the register outputs of the triplicates are each fed into a majority voter to determine the final error corrected output. Finally, there is something called block TMR or BTMR. This is used to protect clocks and routing, as well as synchronous IP blocks that you cannot internally alter. So you must resort to protecting them externally. You can boost protection in any part of the design protected by DTMR and BTMR by physically separating the triplicate blocks on the die. I'll elaborate on each of these different types of TMR later in the video. However, some circuits that you are wanting to apply TMR to include synchronous feedback. Here's an example of a register with feedback. You'll note that the feedback loop and the regular input to the register are gated by a clock enable. After TMR circuitry is created, there's the possibility that an SEU error in any one of the triplicates will not flush out right away and instead be held a bit longer in the feedback loop of this triplicate where the SEU occurred. The error will be held up until a clock enable signal occurs, allowing the error to flush out. We call circuits with synchronous feedback non-flushable because simple voter logic alone won't necessarily get rid of a single bit error. Why is there a problem in non-flushable circuitry such as this when you apply TMR to it? To understand this, consider what happens when an SEU causes an error in one of the triplicates. The error is now held in the feedback loop up until when the clock enable pin is enabled. Suppose now that a second triplicate is hit with an SEU before the clock enable pin is enabled. Now two of the three triplicates contain erroneous outputs. As a result, the majority voter generates an incorrect output value from the TMR circuit output. An error has not been mitigated by the TMR circuitry, in other words. To avoid this kind of problem, non-flushable synchronous feedback circuits need special treatment when you are creating TMR circuitry. This treatment involves inserting one or more voter in the clock enable feedback loop. Simplify Premier automates this. TMR works by assuming that only one of the triplicates is impacted by a radiation induced error at a given time. The question comes up as to whether radiation can hit and impact two or more of the triplicates at a given time, resulting in an incorrect output from the TMR circuitry. The likelihood of this is greater if the triplicates reside within close proximity on the die. 
Indeed, beam testing in a radiation-rich environment confirms that the act of physically separating the triplicates on the dye can greatly increase immunity to SEUs and SRAM devices. For SRAM devices, this technique can increase protection of configuration bits that are particularly prone to SEUs. For this reason, Simplify offers the option to separate TMR triplicates on the die, and it will specifically direct the place and route tools to do so. Since this physical separation trades off routing delays and can recreate longer routes between triplicates, it is generally good to apply the method to relatively large TMR blocks. The technique is available for any circuit to which you have applied DTMR or BTMR. Let's take a moment to look at the different types of TMR. The first type is local TMR or LTMR. This is TMR that protects registers from SEUs. LTMR finds popular use in anti-fuse and flash devices such as those available from MicroSemi. Simplify Premier allows you to specify where in the design you'd like to apply LTMR using special attributes. Register circuitry with clock-enabled feedback paths are handled correctly when the TMR circuitry is generated. Note that the space industry does not recommend using LTMR for SRAM devices based on beam testing results. Their industry beam testing shows that local TMR just adds area to the design while not improving reliability in SRAM-based devices. The second type of TMR is block TMR or BTMR. BTMR protects modules that cannot be physically altered internally, such as IP. Block TMR triplicates the blocks and votes upon the outputs in order to correct the output of a block. The important thing to know here is that any internal logic feedback loops for things such as clock enables will not be corrected. Therefore, this technique is recommended for flushable modules. BTMR can also be used to protect clock and routing matrices. Once triplicated, the triplicates can be physically separated on the die for additional protection from SEUs. When using BTMR, be sure to synchronize all block inputs to a single clock if you can. Here's an example of using BTMR to protect some pre-verified IP. BTMR leaves the IP internals untouched and triplicates the IP, feeding the outputs to majority voter logic for determination of an error-corrected output. We can also physically separate the IP triplicates on the die for added protection. Note that using BTMR comes with some area and performance penalty that must be traded off against the additional safety provided. A third type of TMR is known as distributed TMR or DTMR. Like BTMR, DTMR is useful for protecting modules. However, it differs from BTMR in that it offers additional protection because you can alter the internals of the module to mitigate errors in combinatorial logic that have feedback to clock-enabled flip-flops. You can also opt to physically separate the triplicates and this provides additional protection. Simplify Premier allows you to apply DTMR to a module by placing an attribute on that module's definition. The original design shown in the figure will be transformed into DTMR circuitry as shown in the next slide. To understand how DTMR works in Simplify Premier, take a look at the figure. The picture up top is the original circuit design and the picture down the bottom, the same circuit after DTMR has been applied to it. The circuit has three distinct pipeline stages, punctuated by a D flip-flop. Stages 1 and 3 have non-flushable circuitry due to a feedback path being present in the circuitry. In stage 1, you'll see a sequential feedback loop. The circuit and this loop are triplicated and majority voted upon, with each voter placed inside the feedback loop. Note that we use one voter for each and every triplicate, thus preventing paths in the triplicates from converging on any single point of failure. 
Stage two is a flushable piece of circuitry. That is, it doesn't have internal feedback. This circuitry is triplicated but no additional voters are inserted since this would just waste area. Any error occurring at this stage in the path will flush out in a subsequent stage of the TMR circuitry. The option to insert a voter does, however, exist. At stage three, the final stage in the circuit that is connected to the system output, the circuitry has a D flip-flop with a synchronous feedback loop to a clock enable pin. And this will be corrected by a voter inserted inside the final feedback loop. A single final majority voter is okay to use in this case, since the output is directly driving a chip IO buffer, IOB, and we have no choice but to let the outputs from the three triplicates now converge at a single point. For more information or to discuss and evaluate functional safety solutions from Synopsys, go to synopsys.com slash FPGA safety. Please also feel free to view the additional videos in this series.